Hello everybody, long time no chat. I thought I would record a video on my Let's Plays. I've just finished up recording and uploading all of my Beyond the Beyond Let's Play. If you haven't seen it, you can click there for the playlist. Not expecting too many people to have watched it. It is Beyond the Beyond after all, but I know of at least one person who has all of it. And one person has watched at least half of it. Yes, two viewers. So I mostly just wanted to chat about What's next? I've been doing a bunch of tests. Uh, some of you have probably seen me upload a lot of the let's test my Wii capabilities, let's test my PS2 capabilities. We're recording Let's Plays, basically. In general, I'm looking at trying to let's play a game that is either on the Wii, PS2, PSP, or any older console. I'm also primarily looking at trying to play a game that I already own. The reason isn't so I don't buy it or anything like that. The reason is because I have so many games that I own that I should probably be playing those instead of playing games that I don't currently own for whatever reason. Hello, Boo. Would you like to join us for this video? Yay, Boo Kitty. So I have a list of a few games. I threw them on my tablet so I can read them off. And just try to go through a gist as to what would people actually want to watch. I did Beyond the Beyond because it was a game that both my father and I played. I liked the fact that it was a game that both my father and I played. But if we only go through the games that my father and I play for any of these Let's Plays, this is going to end pretty quickly. And most of the games will probably be really boring. I don't think anybody wants to watch me play Sid Meier's Pirates, for instance. 20 hours is roughly the length of time I did my Let's Play for Beyond the Beyond. And I started feeling as though that might have been a little on the long side, so I'm trying to aim for something a little shorter. Let me know if you're okay with longer games. I'm, I don't have a problem doing longer games, it's just that I can feel as though I would lose everybody's attention if I did anything longer than about 20 to 25 hours. Going from shortest to longest, we have Commander Keen 6. Commander Keen 6 is about a boy named Billy Blaze. He is the, in fact, grandson of B.J. Balakowitz if I remember correctly, which is the um, protagonist from the Wolfenstein series. Believe it or not, they are related. Commander Keen 6 is a standard platformer, only it was released for the PC. Also, it's mostly meant as a kid's game. So there's a lot of happy-go-lucky things going on, things smile a bunch, uh, you have stunners rather than, you know, weaponry to actually kill enemies and so on and so forth. It's, well, it's kind of aimed toward a young age group. When I played it, though, I was that age group, so this was the f only the second platforming series I had ever played. Next, um, speaking of platformers, we also have Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I'm, strangely enough, I'm really good at Sonic games. I don't know why. I well, pretty much always have been. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is my favorite of the series. It's the combination of two games. Basically, it's a game plus an expansion pack if you've never played it. I could probably provide commentary for that because I can utterly curb stomp the crap out of that game. But it's also a game that has a very large number of Let's Plays, so don't know. Next up would be uh, the first Katamari game, Katamari Damashi. Katamari games, if you never played them, I have absolutely no idea how to describe them whatsoever. You are the little prince and rolling up things to throw into the cosmos because um, the king of all cosmos got into a drunken bender and took out all the stars. I am not joking. That is the literal plot of the game. It's an extremely silly and fun game to play. And I'm aiming toward the original just because it has more plot. I could do the sequel instead if people would prefer that. But it's a PS2 game. It's fun. It's not something I can curb stomp or anything like that. Uh, but I've also only played through it once. It'd be entertaining at the very least. Next up, we have one of my all-time favorite games from when I was a kid, uh, The Lost Vikings. I would be playing through the original. I actually own both the original and the remade sequel, uh, Norse by Norse West, The Lost Vikings Return. But The Lost Vikings is a puzzle platforming game. You control these three characters and go through solving puzzles, trying to get to the end of the level with all three characters still alive. It's... I did not have a computer that was capable of playing this game for a very long time. I actually owned it longer than I owned a computer that was capable of playing it. It's kind of funny. I, Lost Vikings actually holds a really near and dear place in my heart. I've actually only played through it a few times, though. So, it might be interesting. Zelliard. Zelliard is a somewhat obscure DOS game. Um, I actually played through it... 
I've actually only played through the game once. A uh, very long time ago, like during the time that my father worked at a software store, it used to be where he would take games from the store, open it up, we'd play the game, put it back into the box, re-shrink wrap it, and put it back on the shelf. Probably highly unethical. Pretty sure the statute of limitations has expired well by now, given we're talking about something that was 20 years ago, but I played this game back with CGA graphics, had a barest of memories of the game being really hard and interesting. Fast forward until I was in college and going, Celliard, Celliard, that game name sounds familiar. Let me take a... It's that game! Yeah, so Celliard is very similar to other side-scrolling adventure games such as Zelda 2 or Faxanadu. Um, only this one's PC. Specifically old DOS style. It's actually a lot of fun. It's not very plot intensive, but fun. It's also only about ten and a half hours, so it shouldn't be very difficult for us to actually get through it. Speaking of action adventure games, Beyond Good and Evil, so I'm jumping up quite a bit in technology levels here, but Beyond Good and Evil is an awesome, awesome game. It is the best Zelda game that does not have the word Zelda on it that I have ever played. It is a 3D action adventure game similar in style to Zelda, only with completely different theme, completely different main character. Jade is awesome. The fact that this is not an American or Japanese game. This is actually a French game originally. Uh, it's an Ubisoft game back before Ubisoft became a gigantic conglomerate. It's a lot of fun. I've actually only played through it once, and I highly recommend everybody play through it. Even if I don't do a Let's Play of it, play it if you haven't. It's awesome. I may end up trying to buy the HD version and stream that one instead of the original one like what I own. That might be interesting. Next up on my list is one of the few JRPGs sitting on the list, which is Kudelka. Kudelka is the prequel to the Shadow Hearts series. Um, I have actually never played Kudelka, or any of the Shadow Hearts series for that matter. I have a friend of mine that's played through all of the Shadow Hearts. He's never played through Kudelka. Kudelka is a PS1 JRPG. It's sort of Victorianish times JRPG horror. I really don't know a huge amount about the game. I've never played it, but I've really wanted to. And it's only been the past few years that I've actually been able to find it and buy it. We have Trader's Gate, the only graphical adventure game on the list. Trader's Gate is a game that I've owned since, ooh, uh, Sam Goody in Angola went out of business. That would have been, was that during my last senior year at Tri-State or the year after I graduated? Either way, they were going out of business. They were selling all of their everything. And I spotted this graphical adventure game. It was like a dollar or something ridiculously cheap like that. So I went, Eh, why not? It's only a dollar. And I've never played it since. Um, the game was actually meant for Windows 95 and Windows 98, so I might, I might have to jump through a ho few hoops to play it. And the game itself is not very long. It's only about 15 hours at longest. I don't know. Maybe it'd be interesting. Maybe it wouldn't be. Um, from there we have Trine 2. Trine... The game Trine is basically the spiritual successor to the Lost Vikings series, so they have a lot of things in common. You control three characters, only in this case there are three characters where you only control... or they switch between the characters in the same location. Think of it as three personalities of one body. Um, you control three characters, you go through, you solve puzzles, it's an action... It's a puzzle platformer game, very similar to Lost Vikings. Main difference is, is that I've only played and beaten Trine 1. I have not actually played through Trine 2. I've only played about two or three hours of it. I'm going to play through Trine 2 one of these days, whether it's on a Let's Play or not. So uh, Next up on my list are the Might and Magic. So Might and Magic 6 and Might and Magic 7. So the Might and Magic series are a series of first-person RPGs. They were uh, The Might and Magic series was a long-running PC RPG series. They've only recently gone back to their roots and released Might Magic 10. Might Magic 9 actually killed the company that was producing it, 3DO. They filed bankruptcy because the game was that bad. Uh, 6 and 7, however, well, 7 is actually my favorite of the series. It's shorter than 6 when you don't know what you're doing, and longer than 6 when you do know what you're doing. Uh, it has more storyline, more plot, and things like that. But at the same time, six, 6 is the game that I can honestly say I knew better than any other game. Even Shining Force. Holy crap if I played a lot of my Magic 6. And as a result of getting lost constantly and looking things up for my father constantly and having the official guide that had all the maps in it, which was awesome. 
I'd prob- it depends. If people would prefer me to play a game that they know that I can utterly curb stomp, tell you everything about what I am doing while I'm utterly curb stomping everything, or do very silly things like have ridiculously weird parties and stuff like that, that'd be my Magic 6. If you're looking for a game that I can just merely curb stomp, that'd be my Magic 7. The other JRPG on my list would be Wild Arms 4. So, I'm a huge fan of the Wild Arms series. Wild Arms 1 is probably my favorite JRPG. Wild Arms 3 is probably my second favorite JRPG. 2's not that great, but still fun. Um, I've not actually played through Wild Arms 4. I've owned it for a very long time. I've even played maybe about the, basically the intro section, and that's about it. I don't know why. I just haven't. So as a result, I could play through Wild Arms 4. It's a game that, again, I have not played through and not beaten, so it would be a little fresh take, but it also means potentially longer. Also, Wild Arms 4 is the first game on my list that's longer than Beyond the Beyond. It clocks in about 26 and a half hours according to how long to play. Speaking of long games, um, the next game on my list is substantially longer than anything else, um, The Witcher. So The Witcher is a series of games and by series, I mean there's currently only two of them out. There will be a third one coming out. Um, based off of a fantasy novel series from Eastern Europe. Kind of unique in that regard. The Witcher itself is very... We'll go with mature. It's not porn or anything like that, but it's... Substantially darker compared... I've heard people say that the Witcher game series is the um, Song of Ice and Fire of the PC RPG gaming world. And The Witcher is a somewhat conventional PC RPG, or action PC RPG, I should say. All of the combat's real-time, if I remember correctly. I have played maybe about 25 minutes of it. Last on the list are the two strategy RPGs that I was going to pick out. So that would be Phantom Brave and La Pucelle Tactics. They're both made by the same people, so I'm lumping them together. Um, Phantom Brave, I've played the PS2 version. I'd be playing the Wii version. Basically, the Wii version is the PS2 version with an expansion pack added on. But... I love Phantom Brave. Um, excluding my nostalgia filter, Phantom Brave is probably my favorite strategy RPG. That's saying a lot. Admittedly, I have a very heavy nostalgia filter for FFT and another he very heavy nostalgia filter for Shining Force 2. But Phantom Brave is just fun, and seriously, Morona is be destroyer of worlds. I just wanted to hug her for most of the game. It has a fun plot, but also still serious, and it has a plot that's kind of amazing for a strategy RPG. I've only played through it once, though, so this is another one of those. I don't curb stomp it, but at the same time, I do play it decently well. There's a fairly large number of Let's Plays on this, though, so... The other one, La Pucelle Tactics, is uh, the first of the um, Nipponichi strategy RPGs that... Disgaea was the second one, and the much more popular of any of them. I've heard that La Pucelle Tactics isn't the greatest game in the world, but I've actually not played it. So I'd like to play it at some point. Let me know what you think about these, or if you have any other recommendations for games I may have missed. Uh, I'll put a link to my backloggery down below in the description. My backloggery hosts all of the games that I own. Flat out, all of them. Goodbye, Internet. I will see you another time.